we're not gonna wait so we're gonna start okay in 30 seconds so get your water because I don't want you to feel interrupted get some water make sure you're hydrated get comfy not too comfy I want you to fall asleep I don't think you'll fall asleep this is gonna be really interesting stuff so you're not gonna want to fall asleep on this that's for sure okay but just get comfy make sure the temperature in the room is good make sure you're not hungry <laughs> hello Ann Perfect. So this is a little chat box. It's so much faster. You know, it just goes like instantly. So I'm going to use that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's get started. And I just think everyone else will show up when they do. We've got quite a bit of you all coming in right now. Okay, good. I see numbers are still going up as I'm chatting here. So let's give it 10 more seconds. Nine. <laughs> Eight. All right. Even numbers. Come on. Once we get to even numbers, we're starting. Okay. All right, get a pen and paper, guys. You're gonna need it to take some really, really good notes because you're gonna wanna implement these strategies today. Okay, you know what? Let's get started. Now, can you guys give me a thumbs up or a Y for a yes or anything? Can you guys see the PowerPoint all good and clear? Oh, thank you. Hi, Tara. Thank you, Nikki. Perfect. You guys can hear me and you can see my screen. Perfect. If anything goes wrong, you know where to contact me down there on that chat box or give me a little bit of a wave or something. All right. Welcome. Okay. Well, my name is Penny Pong. I am a wellness specialist and fitness trainer. Now, I want to welcome you today to Secret Strategies to Losing Belly Fat and Stubborn Pounds. Now, before I continue, I want to thank the Adelaide Club of the Cambridge Group of Clubs for hosting this today for us and putting this together. So thanks to them and thank you to all of you for being here today. All right. Now, I'm sure we all know someone who wants to or have tried to lose weight, right? And I know we can all have a happier, healthier relationship with our bodies, right? So today it's about learning how to let go the old weight of the past. When I talk about weight, I'm not just talking about the weight on the scale. I'm talking about the weight of negative talk, negative habits, daily complaints that don't serve you anymore. I'm talking about the past pain and disappointments or failures that we may have that we haven't quite resolved and it can weigh us down right? And that, all those things is what causes stress. And stress is the reason that people get unhealthy and they gain weight over time or they start to gain this belly fat and it's so hard to get rid of. Stress. So I call it the weight of the past because chances are this weight, whether it's 10 pounds or five pounds or more that you're trying to lose, or maybe it's a heavy weight that's in your mind and your heart. This weight, chances are, did not come on yesterday. It probably came on a long time ago, over time, maybe last week, last month, last year, and many years before. So over time, that's why I call it the weight of the past. And speaking of time, your time is important to me. So I want to make sure when you leave today that you will leave with strategies that you can implement immediately and you can jumpstart your vitality now, if you already have vitality, you're just going to take it to a whole other level and you can start seeing results with your body, whatever your goals may be. Okay. Now, I just want to make sure that before I continue, um, I want you guys to hold your questions till the end. I'll be here. We're going to you know, end enough time for you to have Q&A. And of course, we can go over time if you need. I'll be right here until everybody's done their questions. Okay, so hold your questions, write them down, and then make sure you ask me at the end of the seminar. Okay? Thank you, everyone. Now, today, you will discover three main strategies. The first one is to listen to your body, not somebody. You depend on no one and no thing, no tools and applications and technology or your mom or your dad or your friend or your doctor or not even me. You don't depend on anything or anyone on how much you should eat and when you should eat. You're just going to know that for yourself. That's called being self-empowered. Number two, you're going to learn how to raise your metabolism naturally. 
so you can burn more calories through your day and you do it naturally even if you're not working out at the gym. <laughs> and the third strategy is to learn to prime your body. This way you can improve your digestion, you can burn fat more efficiently through the day, and with all of this, you increase your energy. And when you increase your energy, you improve your health and your vitality. I'm sure we can all use more energy in our day, right? Now, before I continue, may I tell you a little bit about myself and why I'm here? And I know some of you might have already heard or known about who I am from another seminar, and this is just going to be a review. I was born and raised in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and my family and I moved to Canada when I was only 13 years old. And I've been living in Canada now for over 30 years. And during this time, I've had, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for the past 20 years. And so during this time, I had many, many successes and many failures. And by success, I mean, I helped a lot of individuals and organizations. I got a lot of media attention. I was nominated as one of Canada's top 40 under 40 at the age of 28. And at the time I was recognized for my work in marketing, communications and events. And I got together with a group of people and we raised $10 million and we started a nonprofit organization called Imagine One Day. And Imagine One Day is a nonprofit that builds schools in Ethiopia, Africa. Now it's been almost 15 years now and this organization has built over 50 schools and trained over 12,000 teachers and leaders to sustain the school and communities. So it's exciting to see where this organization will take things in the many more years to come. And when I talk about my failures, what I mean by that is that I made a lot of heartbreaking mistakes that, you know, the heartbreaking mistakes for my, I wanna say for my career, you know, for my finances, the effect of my relationship, my health. But then I later realized that none of those things can be mistakes, right? They can no longer be mistakes if you've learned from them. And I learned a lot from them. And so these failures, I learned these failures, little by little, they led me down a different path and eventually down into my most rewarding work in wellness. I guess you could say my mess led me to my mission and my breakdown led to my breakthrough. You know, now I have the pleasure of teaching others how to achieve the healthiest state of being. I'm a student and a teacher simultaneously because I'm always teaching what I know as I continue to learn my next level. And it's been rewarding for me to see people transform their bodies, shift their mindset, love themselves more. And sometimes my clients would joke around and say things like, Penny, you're so lucky. See, but the truth is, I haven't always been a lucky Penny. And most people would not know the extent of my past and the physical abuse that I endured throughout my childhood and adolescent years. And even though those wounds have healed, they're not forgotten. All of that pain and trauma led me to depression and post-traumatic stress disorder. And it took me a really, really long time to heal. And since I've been able to do that for myself, I now help others do the same. And I go into more details about this in my other seminars, like how to achieve wellness by shifting your perspective. And I remember growing up, they would tell me all kinds of stories about how my life would turn out and my destiny, right? They tell me, yo, your, your dad's side of the family, they all overweight at some point, they get unhealthy, they're all out of shape, none of them are athletic. Your mom's side of the family, oh, they're all just, you know, they're kind of skinny fat. They don't really have a shape, but you know, they're kind of skinny, but not really because they got a round belly. And you're just gonna end up like one of them or somewhere in between. They told me that I was a flamingo. They gave me names like flamingo because I was starting to look like my mother's side of the family. I had skinny legs and a round body. I was kind of an odd shaped kid and I had a funky looking body and I, they called me flamingo. They told me I was slow and stupid because I had really bad grades in school and I couldn't read well and I couldn't retain information well. So I always had really bad grades. So my fate was that I was slow, stupid, out of shape, unhealthy and I'm gonna end up like, you know, 
one side of the family or the other or in between. Mm -hmm. And so with all of this sort of mentality and stories thrown at me as a child, you can't help but believe every, everything that everyone's saying. So you grow up with this insecurity, this low self-esteem. And moving to Canada with that low self-esteem didn't help matters when I got here because that lower energy, emotion, all of that really attracted more same old low frequency emotions of experiences. So I attracted bullies. I had a lot of bullies. In school, they were the same bullies every year. These girls would bug me. They always called me names, threw things at me or point or laughed. And I always ignored it because I wanted, oh, I didn't want to get in trouble. And I just thought it was easier to be kind. And so I ignored it. But one day, a couple years later, one of the girls came up and she decided that she would get a reaction out of me, I guess. And so she punched me right in my left eye. She punched me so hard, I was stunned. And then suddenly something snapped in me and I fought back. I started punching and kicking and pulling and pushing. I was fighting so hard, I couldn't even see out of this eye because it was blurry and bleeding. And next thing you know, her friends were jumping in and I'm fighting all three of them. And I just kept fighting my little heart out until all three of them scattered away like mice. And I was just kind of left standing there, shocked. I was scared, I was angry, I was frustrated. Every emotion in the human language, the human lang <laughs> language was surging through my system. And my eye was throbbing. And I was just thinking, never again, never again will I let anyone touch me, physically hurt me. And I am so done with this story. I am so done with this story that everybody's been feeding me since I was a child. I want a new story. I am going to make up my own new story. I don't know how I was going to do it. All I had going for me was that I had the will to be strong and I was kind, so I worked with that. And you know what, over time, that led me to my new story. And my new story is that I got really strong. I got really healthy. I'm not just talking about physically, I'm talking about mentally, emotionally, spiritually, super strong. I built legs, I shrunk my waist. They can't even call me flamingo. I don't even look like I used to look. My story doesn't even match the one I was being told as I was growing up. And you know, the funny thing is I turned 45 this August and I feel stronger today than I ever did in my 20s or my 30s. And you know, I can't help but realize that whatever I know, like everything that I know today and apply, I can't help but feel that I'm only going to get better. And so what about the health? The health, you know what they told me as we were growing up? Well, we're all prone to having high blood pressure and cholesterol in our family. So at some point you're gonna be, you know, experiencing that, it's normal. And they told me that we'd be taking supplements and medication because we're gonna get old and we're gonna get weak. It's just the way of life. So that's the truth. And then I thought to myself, well, that's your truth. What if I don't want that truth? What if I wrote a new story on that too? What if I learned what my body really needs and I loved it and I nurtured it and I gave it everything it needed to thrive, every nutrient, every breath? What then? Well, I did that for the past 15 years and I can tell you right now, I haven't had to see a doctor for any reason at all. I don't even take antibiotics. I take no, not even Advil. I don't take any medication whatsoever. I don't even take the flu shot and I feel amazing all the time. And if I don't, I know exactly what I need to do. So I can't tell you it's 100% of because everything I know and apply, but I can tell you it's 100% a big part to do with it. And so as a wellness coach and trainer, I've helped thousands of people online and in person to achieve their health and fitness goals and to really feel good in their bodies. I know we all love to feel good in our bodies, right? As a society, you know, we do hear a lot about how we should eat right and work out more, but I find that so often we put way too much pressure on eating right and doing the workout when really we should be doing the work in. 
because 70% of staying healthy and in shape and maintaining healthy weight is what you put in your body. And 100% of that is what you put in your mind. Your thoughts, your stories can make you sick or your thoughts can make you well. And so I have a question for you. What makes a happy, healthy relationship? What do you think it's made up of? A happy, healthy relationship is made up of probably respect, love, compassion, kindness, consideration, right? There's so many great things about that type of relationship that makes you want to stick around, right? It feels good. Now imagine one day, perhaps this person that's given you all these wonderful things like compassion, love, and respect, they start to change. How many of you have experienced relationship changing over time? I think we all have. So imagine if this person starts to change. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. I'm sure everybody's got their hands up too. <laughs> and imagine this person starts to give you less of everything over time, less love, compassion, communication, less respect. Now, how would you feel? Probably disappointed. You're probably gonna get frustrated. Being the loving person that you are, you probably just want to stick around and make it work anyway. And then we might have a conversation with this person, but things aren't the same. Then you start to change. Over time, you start to give less. You're not the same. But here's the thing. You've been given permission to change. The other person's words, action, behavior has provoked you to change. You see, we're always teaching others how to treat us, whether we know it or not. And this is how the relationship with your body works. See, you're always teaching your body how you want to be treated through your internal dialogue, your external dialogue, your habitual ways, your behavior over time. You're training your body how you want to be treated. And your body, well, it just loves you so much. Your body is so forgiving. It's unconditionally still working as hard as it can to keep you alive and well. It is working overtime, making sure you're breathing while you're sleeping. You don't even need to breathe if you don't want to. That's how much your body loves you. It fixes your broken bones. It stops your cuts from bleeding. It finds ways to beat your illnesses before they come and get you. You know, your body loves you so much. It lets you get away with a lot. And we do a lot. We eat all kinds of foods, drink all kinds of drinks, do very little workout, too much workout, don't enough stretch, too much sitting around, whatever it is, we abuse our body a lot. And yet, the body loves us, keeps us alive chugging along, chugging along, chugging along until it starts to bog down. And when it starts to bog down and slows down over time, you call it old. Is it old or is it neglect? So there's nothing wrong with any of this. None of this is wrong. It's all part of life and it's just kind of whatever it needs to be. However, if you want more and you want more fun with your body and life and food, well, then this is for you. You want to hear this. You know, what if you gave your body more love, more respect? What if you gave your body what it needs to thrive, like you really listen to the body? Huh? This leads us to strategy number one. Listen to your body, not somebody. See, your body's constantly telling you many, many, many things. We don't have time today to go into all the strategies and all the many things your body tells you, but we'll go into one today, and it's a big one. Your portion is key, right? It's very important you understand your own portion to maintain good weight, to enjoy your food, all kinds of stuff. So you depend on no one and no thing, right, on how much you should eat. No application, tools, technology, none of that. Mom, dad, me. Doctor, mm, no, you know, for you. And how do you do? No need to count calories because first of all, most people stress out over counting calories and it's not even sustainable. I don't recommend that at all. So then how do you know what you need? Right, well, your body tells you. Your body has the answers, right? To lose weight, to maintain healthy weight, to lose the belly blow, to lose the belly fat, 
all of that to increase your vitality, your body tells you what it needs. For example, when you're eating, let's go with your fist. Go like this, everybody go like this, your fist. Your fist, not your husband's, not your friend's, your, or your wife's. Your fist is equivalent to roughly your one cup, right? If you're just maintaining your, maintaining your body weight, like that one cup is great, that's, that's good. One cup is quite a lot. And if you cup your hand like this and you just fill it up, cup hand is half a cup. Right, everybody just go like this and you kind of roughly, right? The bigger the person, they're gonna end up eating a little bit more and then they need it. The smaller the person, they eat a little bit less because that's what they need. So when it comes to cup, it's like you deal with, that, that, that goes with starchy things, like starchy, heavier things like rice, pasta, potatoes and beans, the heavier stuff, you know? You go with your fist. One loose handful. One loose, your handful is roughly one cup of, and you do that with vegetables and salad, you know? And with that kind of stuff, you don't do one serving, you do two or three servings per meal, right? Two loose handful, three loose handful. That's how you go per serving. And then when it comes to your protein, you take your palm and you say, ha, huh, for me, about my three or four ounces that I need is gonna be my palm without the fingers, right? And the protein are things like chicken, turkey, pork, fish, right? The meats and the seafoods, those are all protein, right? And of course, there's protein coming from plants too. We'll talk about that. Now, if you're hungry, eat more. If you're sore and you're recovering, your body needs it, eat more, right? So you, you can just use your own hand. And protein's great. You don't have to worry about eating too much of that, okay? You're going to need it, and we'll talk about that too. And your thumb, go like that, everybody. Your thumb is your tablespoon. So you're gonna smear that peanut butter on your bread, it shouldn't be more than your thumb size, right? Because little things like that can, it can cause you to gain weight. You put two, three tablespoons without even realizing it just because you like the taste, or might be too much. So low fat peanut butter, sour cream, cream cheese, those things that we love to taste and enjoy, but they're really heavy in calories and fats. All you want is to taste. You don't need to drench or drown your food with it or have overabundance and gain weight because of it, tablespoon, thumb size, right? Tip of your thumb, go like this and go like that. Tip of my thumb. That's about a teaspoon, your teaspoon, of oils and butter and mayonnaise and margin. Again, things that taste so good, but you know, not usually the best for you if you have too much. So you learn to enjoy flavors and not over drench things just because, you know, you wasn't thinking or whatever, or you think it tastes good. It actually tastes great even if you put a little bit, just a little bit for flavor, okay? Things like oils, okay, teaspoon when it's, you know, not that kind of good oil, but if it's good oils, like coconut oil, olive oil, flaxseed oil, hemp seed oil, right? All these amazing oils, avocado oil, go and have a tablespoon, because those kind of oils help you burn the bad fats in your body and your body needs these good oils. Think of a Ferrari, a good car. It needs good oils to run the engine smooth and it runs, it, you know, it doesn't make noise, everything's good. And it's like you think your body's like a Ferrari, you gotta put on some good oil. So yeah, that in that sense, you can put a tablespoon or even more, right? And when it comes to just the portion on a day-to-day, -day, you gotta premeditate your day. Premeditate means you eat according to your schedule, your events, so your activity level, because your days are not the same. So that means your portions don't have to be the same either, right? Monday versus Sunday. Maybe Monday's a busy day. You run up and down the stairs. You carry the groceries. You grab the kids. You go to work. There's so much movement in your life that your Monday might be just more food. And your Sunday is like a relaxed day. You're probably sitting around watching a movie. Then you might just cut the food down. Right? Maybe Monday is a full fist of rice at lunch. Sunday might just be a half, a cupped, a half cupped, right? Your cupped hand. Might be a half cup or even a quarter cup. And then up the protein, right? The protein's great. And and then of course you understand how to just kind of move around. Dinner and lunch. Maybe you had a big lunch, like a big lunch meeting, and you ate more than your share of calories that day. Then you just lighten the load at dinner. Just really light, a nice piece of fish, and you know, no carbs because you already ate all your carbs at lunch. So you kind of know how to play with the portion. Maybe you had a big dinner party last night, and you had so much fun. You wake up this morning, you're still full. So maybe you skip breakfast. You might even have a very, very, very light late lunch, right? So all of a sudden, you're changing your portions based on your life and your schedule. That's called listening to your body, okay? 
So you're meant to have fun in life. You're not supposed to restrict or deprive yourself, but you just have to know how to love and thank your body along the way. Make sense? And so the most important nutrient in your body is water. Water is the thing that makes sure that everything is moving in your body, right? You're digesting food properly, you're burning fat properly, you're recovering, repairing properly, you're going to the bathroom more regularly, you don't get headaches in the middle of the day, you don't get cramps. Water is everything, you know? When you blink, is using water. Your muscles are made up of water. Your whole body is mostly water. So you better be putting water in your body and putting enough of it. So how much? How much is enough? Well, the general rule of thumb is half your body weight in ounces. So if you are 150 pounds, half of that is 75 ounce. 75 ounce of water, if there is eight ounce to every cup, that leaves you with nine cups. That means you gotta drink nine cups, 150 pounds, you gotta drink nine cups of water a day. That's like two a liter and a cup. <laughs> two and a quarter liter, right? So it sounds like a, a lot, but it isn't. It's not when you start first thing in the morning and throughout the day, it kind of, it all works out, especially your food. Your food is water too, right? Food have a lot of water. Like most of your, all your vegetables, like 80%, 90% water or more. Rice and potatoes are all like 70% water. Did you know that? Chicken is 60% water, chicken 65%. So, and then fruits, right? 80% water. So there's a lot of water coming from foods because I know a lot of us don't drink enough water and we survive, thank gosh, we're eating foods because the water's coming from there too. However, if you're trying to flush, well, you want fresh water. If you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to eliminate toxins, well, the best way is to flush with real water rather than solid water, right? Water from foods. It still works, but it's not the same. You know what I mean? You kind of want like pure water, okay? So there's strategy involved when it comes to getting healthy and losing weight. Otherwise, if you're just maintaining and feeling great, then just do your thing. It's all good, right? But these are just strategies to give you more leverage, okay? So premeditate. Again, that word is very important when it comes to loving yourself and taking care of your body. You've got to premeditate. What's the weather like that day? You know, is it really hot? Are you sweating more than usual? Did you work out and sweat even more? Like, were you active? So you're perspiring under your clothes, but you don't even realize that? All of that is like water leaving your system. Me talking, all that was water, just air coming out, evaporating, right? So I need to keep drinking water as I'm talking. So even your food has sodium and sugar in it. They can tend to make you very thirsty, right? And I'll get to that question in a second, okay? And especially towards the end. Please remind me. I don't want to miss your question. Um, okay? And so you want to make sure that you're drinking enough water to flush out the sugars and sodiums, right? Because you're going to feel dehydrated. Look out for your urine. That's another key. Am I having enough water? I don't know. Well, check the color of your urine. Chances are, I mean, you want it to be pale, pale, pale yellow to clear. That means you're hydrated and you're good. But if it's color like bright yellow or a different color no you're not a good sign that just means you're dehydrated or you got some toxins that need some flushing you know so of course when we wake up in the morning most of us are kind of like a deep yellow or whatever but that's just because we've been sleeping right so that's different but when you wake up try and replenish okay and then do that throughout the day until you go to bed that's a different story all right now if you eat when you're hungry right when you feel hungry you gotta eat you can't be like punishing the body Eat something, a little something, right? And if you ate and you're still hungry, you eat a little something. You never punish the body. You say, okay, let's eat a little bit more, but choose wisely. You want to choose more greens and protein because green and protein equals lean. It rhymes for a reason, right? No coincidence. You want to up the ante on that and go, hmm, yesterday I had half a palm and I was still hungry. Today I'm going to do a full palm. Oh, I feel much better. Okay, cool. On a day like this, I know I need that much, right? That's how you learn about your body, right? And if it's an active day, you need more energy. You're going to need your energy to come from carbs and good fats, not protein and greens. They don't have that same calorie to give you that sustained energy. That's why greens and protein equals lean. They're just kind of a good weight loss strategy. But to get that mm, big more energy that you might be feeling lethargic and need more energy, up your carb. Maybe you only had a quarter cup of 
quinoa or brown rice or a quarter potato and then you're like, I'm so hungry. And then you're like, okay, I'm gonna do half a cup next time. And if I'm working out, I'm gonna do three quarter, right? So you have to understand your day activity and how you feel and then just adjust it, okay? Eat slowly. Because you, you know, it takes about 20 minutes for your brain to even know you're full. So you can gobble everything up in 10 minutes because you're a fast eater. And you don't even realize how much you ate. At the end of 20 minutes, when it starts to sink in, you're going to feel like a balloon and you want to blow up. And it's so uncomfortable. And your body, that's just another way of abusing the body, which is not fair, especially done over and over as a habit. You're teaching your body to slow down, right? We're always teaching our bodies how we want to be treated, right? So... Be mindful, eat, enjoy, savor the taste. And if you feel comfortably full, comfortably full, like a five or six out of 10, right? you know, it's good. Even six and a half out of 10, then you're good. Stop eating, right? Share the food with people. It's fun to share. Give it away or just pack it up for later. Because at the end of the day, it's better to go to waste than to go to waste. <laughs> All right, so that leads us to strategy number two. Okay, number two is you want to raise your metabolism so you can burn more calories through the day. So how do you raise it naturally even if you're not working out at the gym? <laughs> well, your metabolism moves as fast as you do. So if you move fast, you walk fast, you're going to burn more calories in that day, right? If you speed things up. There's times where you can't speed things up, but there's a lot of times in your day where you can just move faster. You want to take advantage of those times, right? So if you and I were both walking 200 yards, let's say you were speed walking and I was just strolling my way there. So you get there before I do, and then I come in a little bit later. Who do you think burned more calories? Obviously you did. You burned more calories because you sped walk there. You burnt double the calorie that it took me as I was just strolling over. So, and you didn't even have to go to the gym. You just walked faster. So why don't you just move? The metabolism listens. You want to move fast? Great. Then I'm moving fast with you, right? So you are, the metabolism is moving as fast as you. So leave the strolling for the park. Walk faster, move faster. Take every chance to pick up your bags and your groceries and feel the muscles burn because you want to find the burn. You want to feel the burn. Why? I'll tell you in a second why. Walking around, you got the stairs. Most of you take the steps up one step at a time. If you guys ever met me, I take the steps up two at a time. Why? Because it burns my legs. <laughs> and if it's burning my leg, that means I'm burning way more calories. If you feel the burning sensation in your body, that's called burning more calories than usual. So you want to create that burn feeling, whatever, however you get to create it. So take the steps, two steps. You're not really working out going to the gym. It just will take you like a minute just to take the stairs up and already you burn twice the amount of calories. All these little things you do can really raise your metabolism and train your body that this is the way you move. So it needs to meet up with you and move the same way, right? So you want to create that afterburn effect. And what I mean by afterburn is because usually when you're done walking up the stairs, guess what? That burn is still going on even if you're sitting down. That means you continue to burn even when you're watching TV. And you didn't even have to work out, right? So it's called being active and being proactive and being mindful and deliberate and premeditating, right? This is all stuff that you want to be and do for yourself and your body. If you don't burn that muscle, then you just go on a diet. This is what it looks like, right? Neglect is obviously neglect. Diet, you know, you shrink. But then you're kind of out of shape still. <laughs> Soft and weak. You want to implement the burn. Because when your muscle feels the burn, it signifies, it, it knows. It's like, I need to strengthen up, right? So if you want any muscle in your body to be tight and strong, you better be feeling a burn in that part of your body more often at least twice a week, feeling the burn in your abs, feeling the burn in your back. I'm here, down here, with, most women are like, oh, my bra fat. I'm like, what bra fat? Okay, all kinds of names people give things. Oh, my McDonald arms. I'm like, what? So I'm saying, if you want those areas to be tight and strong for life, you get better be saying to yourself, yep, I feel the burn in all of those areas at least twice a week. Then, of course, you're going to maintain your, your strength and your, and your firmness. If not, uh, you know, you can say you're getting old, but I don't know if it's old. 
It's also the food you want to eat. And I'll tell you in a second, the type of foods that keep you strong and firm along with the exercise or the, the burn, creating the burn, right? So there's lots of times in your day where you literally are waiting, really sitting around waiting for a friend, waiting at the, at the microwave for your food to be ready or waiting for a commercial on TV to end. Oh, is that waiting game? You can play games. You wanna make use of those times. Maybe just start doing 10 push-ups. Feel the burn in your chest and your arms. Maybe do squats. Feel the burn in your legs, right? Burning more calories and keeping them strong at the same time, those muscles. So you wanna say, maybe play a game and see how many, how many jump squats can I do in 30 seconds while my tea is getting warmed up in the microwave? And then just jump and see how many you get, you know, get your cardio up, you get your, you know, there's so many games you can play. How long can I hold this plank? Can I hold this plank until the commercial is over? Already you've implemented bits and pieces of things into your life and all of these things, these burns, they, they, they add up to keep you strong, right? So you wanna be strategic like that. You want to eat foods that raise your metabolism, right? So these are foods that help you kind of increase that fat burn, increase the calorie intake or calorie expenditure. Protein rich foods such as meat, any, any type of meat, lean meat, right? You wanna go into lean meats, especially if you are trying to lean down, lose weight or you know, lose belly fat, then you wanna choose the breast, chicken breast, the turkey breast, so the leaner meats. Seafood is protein, right? Poultry, legumes, nuts and seeds. Now, these protein, they have a thermic effect in your body. And what that means is these type of foods, they work a little harder, you know, they, your body has to work harder to break down these type of foods. And your body has to therefore burn more calories just trying to digest these types of foods. And with that, you see how that raises your metabolism just by eating that food. And because it takes longer to break down, you stay full longer, which is great. Then you don't want to go and snack on things you don't really want to snack on. Okay, so it keeps you full. It's a really good strategy. Keep lots of greens and protein equals lean, right? Other importance of the protein is the second largest material to make up your body next to water. Yeah, so it's a building block and your body needs it to grow and repair your hair, your nails, your skin, your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons. Every part of your body is made up of protein. So you know, a lot of times the muscle, right? The muscle itself need protein to stay alive. Muscle is a live tissue and it just is literally to build, to repair, it needs protein. And then of course, if you give it protein, it stays alive, it's happy. The more muscles you can maintain in your body, the higher metabolism. Because muscles, they actually burn calories just staying alive. So that's why sometimes you see people with more muscles or more fit, they tend to eat more, they just have a better metabolism because they've got more muscles to, to really burn those calories. So you want to maintain the muscles in your body or build them or keep them strong because they're the things that are gonna help you not just stay strong, but to help you keep your metabolism high. But a lot of times people neglect to eat the right amount of protein, especially when they're aging, they think I'm getting too old, I'm gonna eat less, or especially when they're wanting to lose weight, so they go on a diet and then they eat less, less of everything, less of protein. So over time, that lack of protein, that's when your body starts to wither away because your hair doesn't grow the same. Your nails don't grow the same. You know, your muscles are getting a little soft and even though you're working out, it wasn't muscle stuff, I think I'm getting old. I'm like, mm -mm. You, and you're not recovering properly. It's not that you're getting old more than it is that you're not giving your body the nutrient in the right portion that it needs every single day just to stay alive. So you wanna make sure that you're having at least two out of your three meals, two out of your three meals should at least have a palm sized protein or more, right? That's minimum, minimum. Then there's protein coming from foods here and there, a little bit here and there, and that's bonus, okay? So don't ever neglect that. Just because you're on a diet or you think you're getting too old, you still need the protein. You still need to recover. You still need to wake up in the morning and, and, and you know, grow hair and nails, right? So feed yourselves properly because at the end of the day, we're all going to age, but we don't need to feel unhealthy, old, or weak. This is Joe McDonald. She's a friend's mother, a friend of mine that I met at a fitness um, 
competition a while ago, and she's a great, great girl. And this is her mother. And her mother was on medication, had a heart condition. I mean, she was on all kinds of pills. And her health was not good. And she decided to change it around. She's like, so she was 72 when she decided to change it around. And she's now 75. She looks amazing. This so really is just a choice to put in all the right foods. She had a tough time even eating two meals or three when she started because she was eating so little. Had to get her to eat five meals, little ones all day, and it took her like two months to get used to it. And then she started to, you know, obviously get stronger. Now she's on no, no pills, no medication, nothing. She's like stronger than most 30, 40 year olds. Janet Gates just turned 60 she decided to change her, her ways and just eat more food and feel the burn more. <laughs> and because she looked good, she decided to join a competition. It was a drug-free international um, uh, athlete uh, competition. Anyways, that's just a little bit of motivation. It's never too late to become what you might have been. I just love these type of beautiful, inspiring quotes. It's never too late to start, because really it isn't. I see it all the time, so I can, I can tell you that without a doubt. This guy, well, you know what? He was 70 years old and he decided to change it up. Your body is so resilient and is so, such a humble servant. If you really, really want to train it to do what you want it to do and you stay consistent and then it starts to take you seriously because you're so freaking consistent, it will happen. So it's all about your mindset. How much do you really want it, right? And it took Joan three years and she took her dang time. She took her time, she moved really slow, and took her three years to get to where she was, right? Let's remember Joan right here, right there to the left, okay? And took her three years, and, and if she went faster, if she wanted to move a little faster, it would have taken her less, way less time. But she took her time, and it took her three years, and even then, that's not a lot of time. And she had fun doing it, too. And lastly, this is gonna lead us to a third strategy, so you're going to learn how to prime your body to improve your digestion so you can burn fat more efficiently. And with that, it's so important that you understand timing. When it comes to timing, it is key to improving your health or even losing weight. So what does that mean? So after you work out, for example, right, your body is like you just used up a lot of the energy and you sucked a lot of the glycogen, which is the sugar in the, in, the, in the muscles that give you energy, you just sucked it all up when you work out. So guess what? When you're done working out, your body is in prime state to receive anything. It's like ready to receive. You want to take advantage of that window of opportunity when it's ready to receive because it's not always that receptive. So you want to give it the best stuff so we can repair and recover right away. A little bit of protein, a little bit of good fats, right? Right away, lots of liquids before bed. Your body repairs and recovers itself. It does everything while you're sleeping because you're out of the way. You're not taking all the energy from it. So it does all this work for you while you're sleeping. What's the last thing you put in your body before you actually go to bed? It's very important because you're either going to assist the process or you're going to take away from that process. You do that over 50 years, 30 years, what's going to happen, right? So you want to make sure that you're giving it the best stuff. The best stuff should go in your body the first thing in the morning and the best stuff should be the last thing before, even after your wine and your steaks or whatever you had in the middle of the day. Just make sure it's the best stuff at night to facilitate its processes for you, right? So you want to be, again, premeditating and mindful. Timing. What about breakfast? Well, what about breakfast? See, breakfast just means break fast. Break your fast. You've been sleeping all night, your body hasn't been eating anything or drinking anything, so it's been fasting. Now, if your body is fasting, when you wake up in the morning, you know, the first thing you eat, whatever you it is that you eat and whatever time it is that you eat, is the thing that breaks your fast. Breaks your fast. So you can break your fast at seven, you can break it at noon, it doesn't matter. Break it when you break it, right? But everyone's different. You have to listen to your body, right? Not somebody. Because people will tell you what they think you should do. But you got to listen to your body. If you work late, if you work late, you're going to go to bed late. You're going to go to bed late. You're going to wake up late. And then guess what? You're not going to break your fast till closer to noon. Maybe you wake up really early and you have to work out at 8. You wake up at 6. 
you're not that hungry, but you know you need the energy because when you work out, you always feel kind of tired and you don't like that feeling. So you start to eat a little something at seven. So you break your fast at seven and then you work out at eight. So you have your reasons, right? And then maybe you were having a dinner party. <laughs> maybe you had a dinner party and so much food and you had so much fun. And then you went to bed, you woke up the next morning, you feel like you still had a dinner still in your tummy and you can't even eat. And so you don't break your fast until maybe even afternoon. Maybe you have a small light snack and then you break your fast, you know, that, like at one or something, you know, doesn't matter. You have to listen to your body and make sure you break your fast with some nutrients, right? So you listen and premeditate because if you don't, people are going to tell you all kinds of things, their story, what they think is the truth. My doctor says you shouldn't eat past seven or else you're going to get fat. Well, my mom says you should have breakfast or else, you know, you're going to get unhealthy. It's like, well, mm. You got to find your truth. It's about putting the right nutrients at the right time and according to your lifestyle, lifestyle and according to your body and your schedule because you're training your body the way you need it so it's easy for you. So you got to find your own truth and make up your own story that suits you. So your truth has to feel easy, has to feel good for you. It has to not feel stressful and it has to be sustainable. That's your truth. So you got to start writing a story that suits you and find your own truth. And you get to teach your body how you want it to function as a team with you. Okay. So you want to prime your body. You want to prime your body before you break your fast because the timing is about timing, right? When you wake up in the morning, it's just like you just work, you know, your body's so receptive. You've been fasting all night, no drinking, no eating. So it's going to be very, very receptive to anything you give it. So whatever you give it is going to set the standard for the day. So if you give it, greasy sausage and oily fried eggs, guess what? You're going to function on greasy, oil, slow moving type of low energy day because you're teaching your body. It's how I want to move today. So here's what we're going to eat. And then, or you put something heavy, maybe instead of half a cup of oatmeal, you put in a full cup and a half and you don't even need it. For some reason, you just felt like eating it. And then you're sitting around at the office and you're about to fall asleep because it's just too much right? Too heavy. You're telling your body we're going to be a little slow today. So it's about giving it the right stuff to give it lots of energy and lots of vitality and burning fat for you all day and like ready to just rock and roll with you all day type of thing. So how do you prime your body to break your fast before you put anything else in your body, right? If you're trying to get healthy, if you're trying to lose weight or trying to lose belly fat, not even weight, then you got to do these little things. So you got to prime your body. Pump your, you know, you want to uh, set the stage for the day. You want to improve your energy so you can digest food and fat burn better. Stabilize your blood sugar, regulate your hormones, promote good gut bacteria, improve your health. How do you do those things first before you go and eat something at breakfast or lunch, right? Well, I'm going to share my strategy with you. I offer many, many, many strategies at my four week body challenge body program. It's a global program. Everybody all over the world does my four week program because it's very successful. And this is one of the strategies that I offer out of many uh, during the program. I'm going to share it with you today. Introducing drum roll Penny's green magic smoothie. I'll tell you why. And I didn't even call it the green magic smoothie. I just called it the green drink. And then over time, people started giving it names like the green goddess, so the green magic. And I was like, well, I can't really call it goddess because there's a lot of guys that do my program, so I don't want to start giving it a girly name. So I called it the green magic smoothie. And you know, this is sort of what it looks like. Here, let me see if I can play that. Hmm. Let's see if it doesn't work. I can't play that. There we go. There we go. Penny's green alkaline green. smoothie for the four week shrink your waistline group of participants that started today, so we're just going to test this out. Special alkalizing. Very good for you. Prime your system up to burn the fat and absorb nutrients. Well, that's the green magic smoothie. So what's in it? <laughs> well, you have one cup of fresh water, two big handful, your handful of spinach, four inch cucumber with the skin on it. So the fiber and that color is all the nutrients. Half a medium sized fruit. Most people put the grapefruit because it's the least amount of sugar. That's why I recommend that. But banana is good too, half a banana or half 
an apple, right? Half, you want less sugar in the morning, but just enough to get the nutrient and the flavor. And half inch diameter or so of ginger, like a little chunk of the skin off. And four or five mint leaves, that's sort of optional, but it tastes nice and refreshing if you don't mind mint leaves. Small handful of parsley or coriander, depending on which one you like better. And a couple ice cubes if you want it to be super cold. So, or you want it thicker, because ice makes it thicker. Because you are going to blend it. Use a blender and I will answer those questions. Thank you so much for your questions and hold that thought. Uh, you want to add the water first. <laughs> Don't add all the other stuff. Add water so you know there's exactly one cup of water and then you put in all the other stuff. It's going to blend into two cups of drinks like because all that vegetable turns into water, right? So you're going to just sip at it. So, but you can't sip at it all day. You got to make sure you drink it. Like it's going to be too much for some people to drink that much. So maybe half now, the other half as a snack. But when you drink that serving, right? Maybe you even drink only half a serving, but while you're drinking it, you can't be sipping it for an hour or two. You got to down it, down it in within 15 to 20 minutes. So if you're putting on your makeup or you're shaving or something, you just want to sip, sip, sip and get it done in 15, 20 minutes because it's strategy. It's all strategy. If you sip on it, somebody sipped on it for three, four hours. I'm like, no, think of a toilet, right? If you're trying to flush a toilet and there's only half a tank of water, you're not going to flush very thoroughly. It's still going to be dirty. So you want that six liter of water to flush through the toilet. So it's like, if you're going to drink this green drink full of alkalinity, full of nutrients, full of, you know, things that, you know, wake your body and your cells and oxidize yourself, then you want to make sure you give it all leverage done in 15 or 20 minutes, right? All in your system because green in the inside, right? Lots of greens going on here. Green in the inside means clean in the inside. So you got to slowly start to clean things up before you put food in. And then you've got to be smart with your portions, using your body to tell you what and when and premeditate your day. Is it a full cup today? Mm -mm, today is a half cup. You know, like you've got to know what's happening. Are you busy? Are you moving? Or are you just sitting at the desk all day, you know? And I need energy. I've got to put in the fats. I've got to put in the protein. You've got to make sure you have all of those things, right? In different portions, depending on your day. And of course, you know, for my four week, at home, it's an at home body challenge. People literally get in shape and get fit and strong and healthy at home. And so this body program is global and people like from UK, the United States, they all do it. And um, I hold it every month and they receive a lot of strategies where you learn to eat, not diet. I don't believe in dieting. You learn to eat, enjoy life, learn to enjoy life. So you can integrate into life and not feel like, I don't know what to do with myself now that I've lost this weight. No, you learn to eat as you lose and feel good and healthy. You train less. You train smart. A lot of this stuff, when I tr help people, I don't even meet them. They're just, I coach them over the phone and the videos. The workouts they do, I give them strategic body weight workouts they can do at home if they don't go to the gym. 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day every other day. That's it, right? It's about strategy. Getting fit at home is easy. Getting strong and healthy is, is not as hard as you think it is, right? Especially if you have a strategy so you can have more fun. So this program really is helping you, you know, gives you that detailed plan. You have a detailed plan on how to execute so you don't have any guessing or doubting and there's no room for error. I think that's why it's been very successful. Now, I have some past participants who would love to say a few words right now. So I'm going to share that with you. See if I can find my way around this thing. There we go. How much weight did you lose? Almost 10 pounds. 136 and now 126. So oh. together, six and a half inches ah. in, in four weeks. Four weeks is actually 23 days. But well, who's counting? <laughs> Ten and a half pounds on today's weight. And how many inches around your waist and belly? Four and a quarter. Okay, what's the question? Four quarter is the most important. <laughs> I lost 11 pounds and four inches on my waist. Yeah, I lost 13 pounds and six inches on my waist. So I've continued the program for about six weeks more now. I currently uh, made about 31 pounds less than when I started the program.
I wouldn't say it's the age, right, Bonnie? No, no. Yeah, but okay. I thought it was. Yeah. When I was having difficulty dropping weight, mm-hmm. I I just blamed it on menopause. It was and, on age. Yeah. I'm 56 years old. And I had thought, I had kind of given up that the weight I was adding was to my body. But um, after four weeks of Kenny, I've lost 10 pounds or three and a half inches. In your belly? In my belly. And kind of a new lease of life. So it'll start me off. I'm going to keep on going. I lost 16 pounds and five inches in my belly and hips, and a few inches elsewhere. I lost four inches on my belly and waist, and I feel better. I look better. And mostly, I'm just incredibly happy with the result. And I now have a whole new way of approaching my weight loss and my mindset. Uh, I like that I can, there's nothing off limits. I can have my wine and not feel too bad about it. What's the question you get asked at this program? What can't you eat on the program? What are you, what did you give up? What, this, what, this is what people are asking you. All the time. So what do you say? I say absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of wine and then beat some meters here and there. And um, you still lose weight and belly fat. I, and I, I had everything that was both protocol and not protocol during these past few weeks. I enjoy all my meals. Uh, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. You know, you got rid of that idea that dieting needs to be you're hungry and you're not. Yeah, that was that. I loved it because it was easy. Most of the foods were already in my fridge. I just had to clean up my act a little bit and the weight just went off me. It was wonderful. Got a huge amount out of it. I felt very good. I felt my energy go up. I wasn't tired. Um, You just felt healthy and it wasn't hard. (laughs) I loved it. I found it easy to follow. <laughs> well, and what you said oftentimes is that we would work, work and work and work and work yeah. and think, why aren't we losing any weight? And it really had nothing to do with how much we were working out. Yeah. <laughs> the response, it's been so great and I feel good. My energy's up. I feel great and I feel less inflammated. I started to feel it from week one that my clothes feel better. That is very important. The better part of it even is that I, I feel good. Um, I feel stronger. My clothes are feeling better. I'm just happier. Yeah. And I like that I just feel a lot better. Yeah. So true. And your bloating is so gone. Yes. <laughs> I feel like finally that do that you talk about is it's it's it seems to break. <laughs> I I like the hard but quick workouts. I feel like it's time well spent. Like a very effective quick workouts that you showed us and it was quite fun. And as I started to see the change, it became addicting and I wanted to keep at it. The most important thing. This has been a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, I had a blast. I didn't feel restricted at all. Not at all. I was having so much fun, and you made it really, really enjoyable. I don't know how you have all that time to focus on us, all of us. Full time. I said, geez, I got my money's worth. What the hell's going on here? I got my money's worth. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks, Please. There you go. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I'm signing up for the next ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such wonderful people. Always good, positive vibes. They only have such wonderful people. Even today, like just always such good energy, you know? So, yeah, so I, I wanted to say before you guys go that it's been an honor and a pleasure for me to have served you today. And before I open the floor for questions and answers, I want to thank you for your time and attention. I also want to give you my contact in case you have any questions that you don't want to ask today. You can reach out to me on my email at the bottom there, penny at pennypong.com. You can even go to my website or you know, check, it, check things out. It's a very extensive website. Uh, you can also text or call me. I'm very accessible. So my number is at the bottom, 647-302. So you can write that down, 7923, and you can text me or call me if you have questions if you don't want to ask today, okay? And also if you're interested in the challenge or the four-week program, Program, the next one actually starts at well not till June 29th or you know so that's for the next one plan is June 29th Monday June 29th the next four week at home body program challenge where you you know start to see results for sure 
Okay, so write that date down in case you have any questions and or want to join. Okay, and uh, I'd like to now open the floor for questions and take any aha uh -huh moments. Let me see what we've got here for Q questions. Oh, there we go. All right, let me make sure I answer your questions here. Okay, you can put your questions in Q and A. You can also. Well, thank you, Natalie. I appreciate that. So this is a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. I hope you got lots of it out of it. And so here we go. If you're 120 pounds, that's only 60 ounce, which is seven and a half cups of water. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Is that really enough? Well, so that's why I had in the bottom there, you got to premeditate, right? So that's sort of the general rule of thumb, right? Gives, to give you a baseline. Right, so I hope you understand what I mean by baseline. General rule of thumb, yep, around there. So you want to make sure you're having at least that much, and then give or take. You kind of take, you kind of go, well, I don't feel good. I feel dehydrated. My pee is not even my urine. Right? Remember, I said my urine is not even clear or pale, pale, pale yellow. It's like really bright. That's how you're like my body size, my activity level. I'm gonna need so much more. Right? So that's why I gave you a few strategies to go with, not just the actual formula, because the formula, like I said. Listen to your body, not somebody. It's about just understanding the guideline and just going, okay, today is a wet, a sweaty day. I'm going to need way more than seven and a half cups of water. I'm working out. I'm going to need like an extra three cups because I'm working out, right? A cup before, a cup after, and a cup during. So all of a sudden, you already have to put in three cups. So no, seven and a half cups is not going to be ready or, I mean, enough for you and your little 120-pound body if you're having that type of day or in that type of heat or weather or you're a lot of movement. Okay, so you listen to your body, you're going to take seven and a half as your minimum, and then check your urine, see if it's the right color, and then decide. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Please let me know if I didn't thoroughly answer it. I want to, so just put in the chat or put in the Q&A again, okay? So that's the answer. That's the first question. The second question I have here is, grapefruit can mess with some medication. Yes, it can. Maybe let people know. Actually, it's true. When people are at, uh, at the program, a lot of times we talk about that. So that's why when I shared the grapefruit just now, I shared banana or apple because I'm giving people options. And a lot of times it's just giving them options. And then you know what? Hopefully if they're taking medication, hopefully the doctor would have already told them so they would know. Okay. All right. Next one is how do I access the program? What is the cost? And thanks. Okay. So the program is normally a $500 per person for the four weeks because it is a very, very successful program and you get a lot. So it is a $500 program, but because of the COVID, I have actually been offering it at 300 straight all across the board. Mostly I started that because of the Adelaide. I, I was charging only 300 for the people there. So I kind of kept it that way for them, but normally it's 500. So it's 300 for the four week program. You get full support coaching, full support. And if you don't know what that means, when you go to my website, uh, pennypong.com and you click on the coaching on the top and go under four week, shrink your waistline, you'll see what I mean by full, full support coaching, getting me in video, getting me like I'm giving you all the strategies. Basically, you don't have to think about anything. It's all done for you and anything you need to know, you're fully supported, all your questions will be answered and you're getting pep talks and coaching on a daily via WhatsApp. On the video, you can see my face talking to you. Uh, you see me leaving you voice recording on your phone, telling you for the day what your strategy is. So all you do is have fun and enjoy your food as I coach you through it all. Okay. And then of course, if I put you in a group, there'd be like three or four other people. They all might have questions and their question, they put it into the group just like this. I answer, I put a little voice recording, I might even record my face. And so as I'm teaching people, you get to learn the answers too. So it's really like, a, it's, it's very group supportive as well, along with me giving you full support coaching. So yeah, this is the four ways you get to learn anything you need to, to feel good, you know, whatever it is that you want to understand about food, your body, about exercise, fitness, what can you do at home? Of course, you can do lots at home. I give you a video of what you need to do at home. You do your workout, it might take you 20 minutes to finish the workout. And maybe when you get, you know, stronger, you might, it, might, it might take you a half hour to finish the workout at first. I don't know if you're a beginner then it might just take you 20 minutes when you get stronger. So yeah, so you get your workout on your phone. I'm going to send it to you. You get your 
food strategies all sent to you. I'll be, you know, and I'm there pretty much every day as you heard on the video. I'm, I'm there all the time <laughs> until you actually witness it. You, you, you know, it's hard to explain. And it's a really good thing because you will, and the results are guaranteed because it works and it's really good. And I've never not, it's 99.9 .9 success rate. So I, I, I just guarantee the results only because I know I can back it up. So that's, hopefully that answers your question thoroughly. And uh, let me know if there's any other questions. Thanks for the great session, Penny. My pleasure, thanks for that. Yeah, so does anybody else have any aha moments or any takeaways from today? And oh, if you're taking notes, and you want just sort of a quick little lowdown on everything you learned today, here's your quick takeaway. Listen to your body, not somebody. Your body has the answers. Choose wildly, wisely, eat slowly, pack up for later. Better to go to waste than to go to waste. Your metabolism moves as fast as you do. Feel the burn, create the, the afterburn effect. Eat foods that raise your metabolism, prime your body before you break your fast. Green in the inside means clean in the inside. Okay, so that was your quick little takeaway. So, any other questions before I sign off for the day? Does anybody else have any other questions? No questions or no any any um, um, takeaways that you want to share? Thank you, thank you, Magna, Magda. Okay, well, I don't think there's any more questions since I don't see anything popping through. Uh, so thank you so much everyone for your time and attention today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend it with me and all of us here. So enjoy the rest of your day. And if you have any questions or concerns or anything at all you want to ask, you have my email now and you also have my, um, you have my, uh, number two <laughs> and my website okay so i'll see you guys soon hopefully and hopefully i'll see some of you guys in my four-week program thank you so much jody thank you megan hope to see you guys thank you Carol. thank you you too stay healthy and i hope to see some of you at the four-week program it starts on the 29th or it might even start sooner depending on the groups that i'm putting together so just reach out and we'll have a chat about the details then okay thanks guys have a wonderful rest of your day Bye.